Hi, my name is Nayland Appena. I'm a specialist gynecologist in Hamilton in New Zealand. Welcome to my series of educational videos. Today we're going to talk about prolapse. Part 1. Types and Causes of Prolapse So just what is a prolapse? Vaginal prolapse is a general condition which is caused when structures including the uterus, bladder, bladder neck and urethra, rectum, small bowel, or even the vault of the vagina begin to fall out of their normal positions and herniate through the vaginal wall. Pelvic organs and tissues in the woman's body are held in place by a complex support structure which comprises a network of muscles, ligaments and skin in and around a woman's vagina. The support system also includes a network of tissues known as the fascia. With time, some or all parts of the support structures may weaken and collapse, which gives rise to the condition referred to as vaginal prolapse. If these structures weaken enough, without effective conservative or surgical treatment, they eventually prolapse into the vagina or even through the vaginal opening. Pelvic pressure and discomfort are common symptoms that result from vaginal prolapse, this also usually affects sexual function and other bodily functions including defecation and urination. Types of pelvic prolapse include the following. A cystocele or prolapse of the bladder. When the vaginal front wall, pubis cervical fascia, prolapses, it causes the bladder to prolapse into the vagina, which is called a cystocele. In this condition, the urethra may also prolapse, which is known as a urethrocele. When both the bladder as well as the urethra prolapses, the condition is referred to as a cystourethrocele. Bladder neck descent. This results from a very mobile bladder neck and can often result in a condition known as genuine stress incontinence or GSI. That is, urine leaks during sneezing, coughing or increases in abdominal pressure. Enterocele or prolapse of small bowel. This type of vaginal prolapse is caused by weakening of the upper vaginal support system. This condition usually follows a hysterectomy. During this condition, the front and back vaginal walls separate and allow the small intestines to push against the skin in the vagina. Rectocele or rectal prolapse. When the rectovaginal fascia gives way, the vaginal back wall prolapses causing a rectocele. In this condition, the back wall of the vagina weakens and causes the rectal wall to push against the vaginal wall, which creates a bulge. This bulge usually becomes noticeable during bowel movements. Uterine prolapse. When a group of ligaments called the uterosacral ligaments at the upper portion of the vagina weakens, the condition causes the uterus to fall out of place, which generally causes both the front and back vaginal walls to weaken as well. Vaginal vault prolapse. This type of prolapse usually occurs after hysterectomy, which involves surgical removal of the uterus. As the ligaments around the uterus act as a support to the upper portion of the vagina, in this condition the top of the vagina gradually falls towards the vaginal opening, which causes the walls of the vagina to weaken, and eventually the top of the vagina may protrude outside the body through the vaginal opening. An enterocele is often accompanied with a vaginal vault prolapse. The stages of uterine prolapse are as follows. First degree prolapse. During this, the uterus drops into the vaginal lower portion. Second degree prolapse. In this stage, the uterus falls to the level of the opening of the vagina. Third degree prolapse. In this stage, the cervix, located at the bottom of the uterus, sags into the vaginal opening and protrudes outside the body. Fourth degree prolapse. Ultimately, the entire uterus protrudes out of the vagina, which is called a prosodentia, or complete prolapse. A lot of women may experience some type of vaginal prolapse during their lifetime, which may occur after the menopause, after a hysterectomy, or after childbirth. Generally, women who are older than 40 years of age are more prone to this condition. Women generally hesitate to discuss symptoms of vaginal prolapse with their doctors and do not seek medical treatment. Some women who develop vaginal prolapse do not experience any symptoms. What are the causes of vaginal prolapse? The pelvic viscera, including the vagina, as well as the tissues and organs surrounding it within the pelvis, are mainly supported by a network of muscles. The main part of this network of muscles, called the levator ani, supports the weight of the pelvic organs. These pelvic organs are usually located above the levator ani and perforate through the muscle to open externally. Additional stabilizing support is provided by the pelvic ligaments and pubic cervical fascia. Damage to the levator ani may occur early in life, for example during childbirth. However, at this stage, a woman's ligaments and fascia may well be sufficient to hide the damage. As you get older, the support systems weaken, 
and deteriorate and the structures around them as well. The vagina may start losing the support and may begin falling out of place. This condition is collectively known as pelvic relaxation. When the weight-bearing or stabilizing networks that hold the vagina in place are weakened or damaged, vaginal prolapse occurs. This condition involves support systems for the bladder, rectum, small bowel, uterus, urethra, or a combination of them to lose their stability. The common factors that may lead to prolapse of the vagina are as follows. Menopause. The hormone that helps in maintaining the strength of the pelvic support structures, muscles, and tissues is known as estrogen. After the menopause, the level of estrogen in the woman's body decreases, and this weakens the support system. Hysterectomy. Hysterectomy involves removal of the uterus. The prime part of the support structure of the top of the vagina is the uterus. These support structures are usually attached to the top of the vagina to hold the vaginal vault in place. Without the uterus, the top of the vagina, called the vaginal vault, may gradually fall towards the vaginal opening without the uterus. This condition is commonly known as vaginal vault prolapse. When the top of the vagina falls out of place, it adds stress on the other ligaments as well. Enterocele is also followed by a hysterectomy, which causes herniation of the small intestine downward, near the top of the vagina. Childbirth, prolonged labor or large babies. During childbirth, the tissues, muscles and ligaments in and around the vagina are damaged. The trauma to these support structures is caused by long, difficult labors, large babies, forceps or vantage deliveries and vaginal tears which add stress to these networks. Childbirth is most commonly associated with cystoceles which involve prolapsing of the bladder into the vagina. These usually resolve with conservative measures but may reappear years later. Some other risk factors associated with vaginal prolapse are obesity, advancing age, dysfunction of the nerves and tissues, an inflammation of the connective tissue, prior pelvic surgery and exhausting physical activity. Disclaimer. Without having examined you personally, it is impossible for me to make a diagnosis or advise treatment. All information provided here is generalized and for educational purposes only, and decisions based on this should not be made without consulting your own medical professional. I assume no responsibility for you taking advice rendered here without me having had a physical consultation with you.